Hi, I'm Danica Herrick and welcome to Gorgeous Shiny Things How To Happy Hour. Today we're going to be drinking Blood Orange Cosmos um, from my good friend Nancy Stanley. She was out in Vegas last week for her photo conference and she said this was the best drink she's had ever. So we're going to be um, giving you the recipe at the end of the clip here. So make your drink and get ready. We're going to be doing a faux Carrera marble today on an IKEA Doxa table just to give it a little bit of an IKEA hack and an upgrade. And this is a very easy decorative painting technique. Um, what you're going to need is to first of all prime the table with a really good bonder primer. I used, um, it's a UMA XIM. It, you could also use Rust-Oleum's countertop paint um, in the, just the basic white base if it's, as long as your table's in good shape. Um, and then you're going to be wanting to mix up your glazes. You're going to need a white glaze. I used um, Kills White Primer with a little bit of water and a little bit of open time to thin it out and to extend it so it stays wet longer. And then I mixed up a basic gray using the, the white primer and a little bit of black paint and like a drop of cobalt blue tint just to make sure it's a cool gray. And you'll also need a sea sponge. A nice softening brush, this is the one tool that's really important, so if you're going to invest, invest in a good softener and keep it clean. Mine's kind of on the end of its life. And then just an assortment of different sized brushes. Um, I have really tiny, medium, small, and um, a feather, a white seagull feather or a duck feather if you could find one. And if not, I'll be using a piece of thin cardboard just torn as a feather. Um, and that's all, so let's start painting. Now what we're going to do first is we're just spreading that white paint glaze kind of over the surface really quickly and this is just to float the gray glaze into it. Um, and you know, have some pictures and images of marble while you're doing this to look at and use as a reference. I like to have a couple of different ones just to get like to know, with different styles of veins um, from a really heavy gray to really fine. Now what you're going to want to do is create the basic gray drift that you're going to have going on here. So I'm just going to kind of using my hand kind of wiggling it around and this I'm going to do a heavier marble here so it's going to be a little bit bigger and wider but I want to kind of get the feel of the veins no you need to open it she needs to look at it you decide that I'm just kind of softening it with it's going to soften random areas with the sponge and also taking that Using the softening brush that I told you about, I'm going to start to also blend it out and it really just kind of gives it a little bit more of a softenage. Now this is just the ground that we really want to, we're going to, this is going to be buried under a lot of glaze and a lot of white so this is just kind of that background gray ground that we're going to be doing. And just, you know, continue filling in the rest of the space. You could also use your brush to kind of, if you get a lot of those white little lines like I'm getting, use the brush to kind of dab and soften it so you don't see them as much. Now I filled most of the table with um, kind of just filled in the surface. And right now I'm just softening it out. This is kind of like the map. And then we're going to fill in, like, and connect the dots in this. But just kind of make sure it's kind of muted and soft. And you can take the sponge and kind of, if you have heavy areas that you're not, or if you see a lot of these streaky marks, you can kind of blend in. And also, you can take your white paint, and if there's anything that you don't like, like I'm not too thrilled with like this little chunky section here, so I'm just going to take my white and cloud over it and soften it up. And it also adds like a whole other color to the mix. So, and then you could just soften it again. And make sure that you, you know, you, I usually soften in one direction first and then I use like a quick little circular motion to lose any of those little straight lines. And you just want to continue until you are happy with, you know, the overall area here. And I want to get rid of all these little dabbly marks that I made. Now is just kind of darken up some of these, like pull up some of these veins. We're using a, very, a lighter tip and just kind of wiggling and pulling and rolling the brush because the that if you you don't want like lightning bolt kind of like zigzags you want to kind of just vary the pressure and also the, the edge of your brush and you can just kind of have them fragment off and these little things that happen here are always good to pull off of and I'll show you with a smaller brush 
I'm just going to use an angle brush here. You could create smaller, finer breaks. I can kind of hide that little thing there. And you're going to kind of continue along. You can connect. And anything, anywhere you have these kind of like little, little knuckles that stick out, you could pull a new vein from. And then once you have a couple of these going, what you want to start doing is feathering them out and softening them, going in each direction, not so you don't, you know, you just don't want to see a lot of brush marks. to continue, so I'm just starting, you can start to see the veining taking, that are starting to pull up. So you want to kind of create, do the large map first, and then what we're going to do next is go with a little bit darker um, and pull up and kind of trace some of these to give it more depth. So. I'm going to finish adding more big veins to here and then we'll come back and do the small ones. When you're doing this, it helps to pull your hair up because first of all, it won't fall into the paint. But second of all, when you go to brush it out of your eyes, you won't get paint and primer in your hair and have to chop three inches off like I did today because I had primer I couldn't get out. So pull your hair back. Wear a hair net if you really want to, but just don't touch your hair once you've been painting. I've gotten the majority of my dark lines in, and now what I've been doing is just kind of going around. Anything that I'm not happy with, I'll just kind of lightly put a little bit of the white over to soften it, take the softening brush really quick, and just bury it a little bit. Because if you look at real marble, you'll see that the gray kind of, there's a lot of gradients of it. And it kind of goes up and under, and then it comes back to the surface. And how we're going to pull it back is by taking your fine brush and you could use the, the regular gray we have or you could even use put some more black in it if you want to darken it up and if you have an area of veining that you're happy with um, like right here I'm just going to kind of take my fine little brush here and darken up an edge and also to hide some of these little like brush marks that I had put into it on accident kind of deepen it up and you could also kind of pull and roll your brush and create little veins that come off. And you're going to be adding smaller veins now. And you want to kind of come back and reconnect into the existing marble. And just put a few of these in randomly. And do the same thing again. Feather it. And if you don't like anything, like I don't like this right here, so I'm just going to put some white over it. And once you have a couple groups like this, and you want to make some areas pop, you're going to take your white paint that we have and kind of just fill in certain groups and clusters. Add the white to it. And then Soften it with a sponge, and then once again, with the, you're gonna feather it out. And this just kind of creates, you know, highlighted chunks of the marble. And then you just keep doing this on and off. But you're basically gonna look at your marble and just try to replicate it. But the basic techniques really are just doing the veining and softening over and over and over again, and building up layers. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how, if you don't have a feather, how to do veining with a piece of I cardboard. I took a thin piece of cardboard and I ripped it into more of a feather pointed tip. And you're going to just dip this into the gray paint. And I actually should have showed this to you in the beginning because it's really an easy way to get some good veining going on. But in this case, um, I'm just going to bring a vein that kind of comes into this. So what you do is you take this and you just wiggle it, push it, roll it. But do you see how you get those great breaks in there? And you could just take this, but also and push it. If you, if you get these like little openings, that's just a little bit of white that got connected. And you could kind of push it over to this one. But you get these really, they're much more interesting than you can get with a brush. But a feather works wonderful, but if not, just take a piece of cardboard and use that and roll it. And then just soften it with your brush. All right, now I'm pretty much, I'm happy with like what I've got going on, and I'm just going to do a few little things to really give it a lot of depth. And I'm going to kind of take, pick a vein that I kind of like, 
and give it a little extra something. Uh, I'm going to kind of take this one and just rub against the edge, roll it, and push this up. I'm just going to kind of give this guy, push this up to the top here, and soften it out. That just gives you a little extra depth. And I'm going to kind of continue doing this to a few spots that really have faded out. And you could use that feather or the piece of cardboard, or you can use a narrow brush or even a really fine, tiny brush. I'm going to make my color a little darker here. And I'm going to pull a very fine line just along the edge here. Another way that you could pull veins and kind of run fine dark lines is using a small, like, a liner brush. And starting at the, holding it like a conductor, take the edge and you just kind of pull it and roll it and push back up. And just kind of follow along one of your veins. Don't worry if that happens, that's just, it's fine. And then we're going to slightly throw a little bit of the white over it and then... Okay, so when you're finally happy with your marble, you're going to put on a coat of polyurethane, an acrylic so it doesn't yellow. Um, and you can either do a satin or a high gloss, depending upon what your style that you like is. And over here is my countertops and my backsplash that I did. And I did two coats of a satin on this, but this was originally for mica. And you, I used the Rust-Oleum countertop paint as my base. And I'm hoping, and I, I'm pretty positive that it will hold up, but... Um, just practice on something and just have fun. I hope you enjoyed this one and we'll see you next time on How To Happy Hour on Gorgeous Shiny Things. Thanks!